Hey guys, so in the last two videos we went into resonance and I defined resonance and we talked about uh, stability of resonance forms and how that affects how one resonance form may better represent the molecule than another resonance form. Um, but we didn't actually get into how to draw resonance structures. And it's, it's not too difficult, it's just, we're just moving electrons, remember? So uh, we're going to do that today, and I'm going to lay down uh, some rules to start with. The first one being that atoms cannot have greater than eight electrons. And this uh, just goes along with our octet rule that you've that you probably learned in AP Chemistry. So, uh, unless you're dealing with sulfur or phosphorus, uh, we can't have more than eight, eight electrons. It violates the octet rule, and it's just good to keep that in mind when drawing, um, drawing these movement of electrons, because if you're moving electrons from, from one atom to another atom, you have, to, um, you have to make sure that you don't violate this rule. So, uh, no atoms with, like, five bonds or... Uh, or maybe two lone pairs and three bonds and etc. So that's our first rule. Um, our second rule is we have to avoid formal charges with a magnitude um, greater so we have to avoid formal charges with a magnitude greater than one. which means that we can't have this we can't have uh, we can't have uh, anything minus two or lower and we can't have anything plus two or higher um, however uh, negative one zero and plus one are valid um, for resin they're allowed um, yeah so our third rule is that open shell carbons are valid meaning that you can have you you are allowed to have them in our uh in your resonance uh, structures um however open shell oxygen nitrogen and uh halogens they're really like uncommon um so it's best, and there's still they, you can still draw them. However, they're so insignificant, um, it's better just to avoid them. So O, N, and then X for halogens, and these guys are not allowed. Okay, and now we will go into rule four, which is, which actually uh, like helps us in drawing resonance. And this is that lone pairs always stay on the original atom, whether it's associated with a bond or if it stays a lone pair, it has to stay with the original atom. So lone pairs stay on original atom. Okay, and uh, so I'll draw an example of this. So we can have, let's say we have a nitrogen that's attached to three boron molecules. That's a B. Okay, and we can uh, we can draw the this lone pair um, forming a bond with either uh, or with any of the three boron structures, and I'm I'm gonna show what that looks like. And I'm just gonna draw the resonance form with one of the borons because it's symmetrical. 
And then if we draw on our formal charges, we'll see that we have a positive nitrogen and a negative boron. So, um, so we can show this uh, lone pair going into any one of the borons. The borons being open shell will uh, gladly take in two electrons to become full octet. However, we cannot form a bond with boron with this lone pair and then show resonance of the electrons in that bond uh, moving to be a lone pair on boron. And if I try to draw that, you can see uh, you can see why that is. Um, so here was our structure H2B nitrogen BH2. Now, if we draw these electrons going here, and let me draw in my um, formal charges because that's important. If we draw those electrons going there, what we get is, first off, we get an open-shelled nitrogen, which is bad to start with. That's a bad BH, BH2. Um, but we get um, two formal charges that are greater than uh, one in magnitude. So we have a we have a negative two on the boron, and we have a plus two on the nitrogen, and that's that is just a no no. You cannot do that. Um, let's go on to rule number five. I hope I have enough space. So rule number five. Is that electrons in double bonds in double bonds stay with either one of the atoms in the bonding? So either atom it bonds. Okay, and uh, so we can draw an example of there. So let's have this guy, and we can show two different resonances. One being that the electrons in the double bond go to the carbon on the right, and the other being that the electrons go to the carbon on the left. Um, since I'm running out of space, I'll only draw it for one, but it doesn't matter since the molecule's sym symmetrical. But uh, you, you basically get what's going on. So it could be... Oh, shoot. Stylus is really bad. Whatever. And we, um, so we get this new structure where we have a lone pair on either one of the carbons. So I drew it on the one on the right. And so that'll get a negative formal charge. And then we have an open shell carbon on the left with a positive formal charge. So you see, when we move the double bonds, we, we, dissociate it with one of the atoms, meaning that it'll become open shell. And um, so as long as uh, these electrons, so I guess we'll circle it, as long as these electrons stay with either the carbon on the right or the carbon on the left, it's, it's a valid resonance structure. And um, we can get a little more complex, and I'm going to clear some space. And I'll draw this molecule. Okay, and we can 
we can move these electrons in the pi bond, and I keep on saying pi bond, so pi bond is a double bond. So we can move the electrons in the, in the pi bond or the double bond um, up onto the oxygen, so this pi bond, we can move those electrons up to the oxygen, and what this does is that'll leave us with an open shell carbon in the, in the center, right? Um, I'm not going to draw that though. Uh, but we can take it a step further. So that's one valid resonance structure. If we just move these electrons up and we have a positive carbon. However, we can take it a step further and we can say, okay, well, how about this double bond? How about these electrons in the double bond move to fill, to form another double bond with that central carbon? And, um, and uh, and pretty much make that uh, central carbon closed shell. And now this doesn't violate our number five rule. Uh, those electrons are still associated with the carbon on the right. However, it's not as a lone pair. It's as a it's as a bond with a with a new carbon. Okay. And what'll that do? Well, that'll move our positive formal charge to this carbon now it only has uh, three bonds to it, it's missing uh, two electrons, it's open shell. So that's, uh, that's another resonance structure, so that's kind of like a, a two-step resonance structure. Um, and that brings me to my final rule, which is the charge of the original, so I'm going to write it here, charge of the original equals the charge on the resonance form. And what this means is that the summation of formal charges, so if we sum all the formal charges in the original molecule, it should equal the summation of the formal charges in the resonance structure. And uh, so that just makes sense, right? We can't gain or lose a charge just by shifting where electrons are. The overall charge has to be the same. And if you look at this above example, we have an uncharged molecule going into one that has a positive charge and a negative charge. So, so totally that resonance form has, is also uncharged. And so we don't violate uh, rule number six there. Um, yeah, so those are, those are my rules of uh, going with resonance. And we didn't really uh, draw any, but I hope you see um, how we can get these electrons to move just with these rules that I've implied. So in, in our first example, we had our, um, we had our lone pair moving into open shell uh, open shell uh, atoms, right? And then we also, we had this example where we have a double bond moving into an open shell atom that's created by another double bond moving up. And, uh, yeah, so that's, that's, I'm just talking and there's not really much on the screen. So, you know, we'll just go through more examples in the next one and hopefully it'll become a little more clear to you on on how you can draw a resonance form. So thanks for listening. I hope, I hope this was clear. Um, yeah, so leave feedback uh, if necessary. Thank you.